So, soil salinization refers to uh, increasing soil salinity. It can have uh, either natural or anthropogenic causes. So, if we're talking about natural causes, uh, maybe it has to do with uh, the reduction of precipitation, which decreases infiltration. Uh, sea level changes due to climate change or other. The geology, for example, if there's karst formations, then possibly there's water flowing in uh, the opposite direction towards the aquifer and uh, filling in the gaps, creating a salinization problem, or a high salt content due to the geology of the area. Uh, when we're talking about anthropogenic causes, it regularly has to do with overpumping or illegal pumping, uh, which brings salt-rich irrigation water to the top. And uh, the other big reason is insufficient drainage due to uh, soil sealing. So even if there is enough precipitation that doesn't leach, that doesn't wash away the uh, salt water from the soil, so it's retained. Now at European level, uh, this is a map from uh, JRC. Uh, what JRC tells us is that there are two main types of uh, uh, salinization, of uh, salt accumulation in, uh, in Europe. One is the uh, due to geology, so it's already accumulated continental salt in the, in the soils. And the, one, the other one is the, the human-induced uh, salt accumulation due to uh, uh, improper land management, such as overpumping of water and uh, irrigating with, with salt water. Now, the, the really big problem with salinization, at least uh, as well for our, for our study site, is that it mixes up with, with the, the groundwater, which, uh, as you can see here, it's, it's a very big resource for Europe. Now, uh, in, in the coastal aquifers, this is, this is a huge problem in many cases. And even though the uh, WFD already contains some, uh, some measures for that, uh, and uh, it, it includes solid conservation in, in some, some way or another, this is not uh, taken into account in every European country at the same uh, level. Now that for the drivers, as we said, there's natural drivers, so there can be deposition of uh, marine sediments, uh, sea level variations, meteorological processes that uh, can change, for example, reduce precipitation, and uh, there is the issue of climate change, which uh, at the bigger level is that the sea level drop. And there are, there are anthropogenic drivers as well, uh, so you can see here what the, the normal situation is. There's a, a lens here that prevents the, the salt water from coming in, the fresh water from mixing up. But there, if there is pumping uh, and and uh, it's not managed correctly, then you can have salt salt water coming in and uh, polluting the aquifer. So. Uh, irrigation trends to t tends to increase the salinity of the, the groundwater, uh, and also there is salinization problem if we have waste wastewater that that has increased salinity. Now ways to to assess uh, there are several ways documented that can be used to assess uh, soil salinization. One is uh, one per very popular way is to use electric conductivity, which is both in in uh, soil uh, uh, samples, so if you make a, uh, a soil solution, you can measure uh, electric conductivity. And also, you can use this in, in aquifers. Uh, you can measure the leaching fraction, you can also measure salinity in, in vegetation, so it's the, the root, zone, root zone salinity. And also the sedicity in soils and waters with uh, ESP and SAR, and this is I think what's documented already from, from the GRC for many parts of Europe. Uh, re regarding the uh, electric conductivity, uh, the, there is a scale. If you have over four uh, millisiemens per uh, centimeter, then you have a very big, big problem. And there is a, uh, a routine how you how you can measure this electric conductivity in a standardized way. Unfortunately, in this project, we only have one study site with salinization, so I don't know if we can compare with something. 
as well, or if we can if we can bring this up to JRC levels, which uh, who, who measure something else. Uh, there's salinization mapping, which can be done with remote sensing or geophysics. Uh, essentially, this is mapping the, the extent of uh, salinization at this time, or what is the potential hazard for, for different areas, and uh, aerial photography, Landsat thematic mapping can be used. Uh, this modeling, we also do a lot of modeling in TUC for uh, salinization, and uh, there's, a, there's a bunch of models used. Uh, I think we, we used Seldment, which is not here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, measures that can be used. Okay, so depending on, on the, the extent of the problem, where it appears, uh, what the geology is, what is the, the, the intended use for the water, uh, there's different measures and there's different extents, and uh, the management decision is not so easy. So this one management option is to just go on as you are, uh, if it's too expensive to uh, to remediate, and uh, depending on what the, the land uses are, uh, you can consider to change the, the land uses, change the vegetation, change uh, the grazing regime, uh, and also you can consider changing the vegetation species that are in this area in order either to remediate or to uh, uh, to have more toler tolerant uh, vegetation. Uh, you can retain the natural vegetation uh, probably through the, the through the years this vegetation has has, uh, has managed to, to cope with uh, saline soil or you can implement engineering, engineering options such as groundwater saturation optimization which is uh, a really good way to manage this so if we go back to the, the pumping figure if if the pumping is managed correctly then you can have uh, lower uh, percentages of water coming out and evenly distribute it. You can make uh, other engineering uh, technologies like barriers, so blocking the movements of salts. Uh, you can put fresh water back in the aquifer to reduce the level of uh, uh, salinization uh, or reduce waterlogging induced salinization. Uh, transport water from other areas uh, or eventually, if the problem is really big and you cannot bring water from other, uh, other places, then you can decide to, to actually desalinize the water you have from the groundwater, which is not really remediating, but you can at least use this water. Uh, there's also a different level of uh, approaches, which is institutional approaches. So if you wanted to actually impose this groundwater obstruction reduction, then you can you can go to management level and say that there has there can be penalties, or you can uh, increase, or you can reduce the losses in your system. You can improve the, the efficiency of uh, irrigation. So this is a, a more uh, institutional approach. Uh, you can introduce the, the salt tolerant crop not at farm level, but also at uh, policy level. Do conjunctive use of water, so you can mix your water, bring in water from other places, uh, you can blend it, uh, different qualities of water, and also you can uh, develop instruments to help farmers and uh, develop soil management technologies, etc. Uh, so the linkage of salinization with uh, soil function ecosystem services has to do with provision well, with, with pretty much all services associated. So, yeah, you can see a list here. The, yeah, this is, this is pretty much it.